Hello, my name is Dr. Stacy Graber and I am a member of the YSU English Department and this presentation is titled Reynolds and the Elevator Pitch, Long Way Down as a Catalyst to Sharpening Speaking and Listening Skills. Of course, there are many ways to read and interpret works of literature. And despite what impression you get from dubious sources like Schmoop, there really isn't a correct or authorized meaning with a capital M for any work of literature. Instead, there are simply more or less effective interpretive arguments that we make as readers, some lining up more so with textual evidence and or the impressions of a community of readers. That said, this presentation will look at Jason Reynolds' book, Long Way Down, as an opportunity to think about speaking and listening skills. More specifically, I see in Reynolds' book an argument leveled multiply and passionately against the perpetuation of gun violence through a series of elevator pitches or rapidly delivered persuasive speeches. In Reynolds' text, the ghosts of gun violence past return to make a case against the idea of perpetuating the cycle of violence, retribution, and anger. Now, related to the quoted language above, I'm referencing Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, which I think Reynolds alludes to through the structure of the book. In Reynolds' book, the ghosts make emotional, ethical, and logical claims to impact the receiver and change the trajectory of the listener's life. In this way, the listener is systematically persuaded to adopt a specific way of thinking or course of action based on the compelling presence and rhetorical savvy of the ghostly speakers. This is different than perhaps the more familiar purpose for an elevator pitch, which might involve making a commercial claim, a claim to buy, sell, or produce some item. In the context of Reynolds' book, the purpose of the pitch is to persuade the receiver to change his or her mind on the issue of gun violence and or to move to a position of advocacy or activism. Now, as an instructor who works in the areas of English education and teacher education, I find this book especially compelling for the way it foregrounds speaking and listening skills. The speaking and listening standards are especially important because everyone will be required to communicate effectively across academic and professional experiences. So Reynolds' book, among other things, showcases the importance of oratory skills and argumentation. At the same time, it should be noted that not everyone is initiated or introduced to speaking and listening skills in the same way, meaning some people have experiences that engage them indirectly with practice for sharpening speaking and listening skills. For example, imagine having a parent who works as a trial attorney. How would the work that person does shape his or her conversational style? What benefits might come with learning the moves of a trial attorney? This is why it is important for schools to offer opportunities for practicing essential skills related to speaking and listening. And this supports the value of books like Long Way Down in that they create the conditions for practicing critical skills, even as they initiate us to important social issues that prompt us to become actively engaged in reshaping our world. So how could we think about Reynolds' book as an invitation to or opportunity for making our own independent cases for arguing issues of key importance in changing our community or world? Meaning, what argument or elevator pitch would you offer as critical for people to consider and act upon? It's a difficult decision, as there are so many pressing issues in our world. For example, issues of inequality, oppression, suffering. However, if we only had one opportunity to argue the critical importance of a single issue, what would that be? One example of an issue I might offer would be the exploitation of animals. More specifically, I resist animal exploitation in the interest of profit and so-called entertainment. I'm thinking here about an essay by John Berger titled, Why Look at Animals?, in which Berger argues that the category of animal has disappeared in capitalist societies. Essentially, Berger makes this case through critiquing practices like pet keeping, 
co-optation of animals and the artifacts of children's culture and maintenance of zoos and animal theme parks. And I can see violence against animals occurring through practices like indiscriminate breeding, animal experimentation, and thinking about animals as people rather than as authentic wild creatures. However, in saying this, I am not vaulting animal lives above human lives. Rather, I am acknowledging that all suffering is equal in terms of the damaging consequences. If only I could have made my case through the use of poetry as Reynolds did in Long Way Down. Instead, I used a few moves I picked up from my favorite composition book, They Say, I Say, The Moves That Matter in Academic Writing. I like this book because it offers accessible advice for research, writing, and argumentation. So, what did I do in making my case? Well, utilizing some of the moves from Graf and Birkenstein's book, I entered into conversation with the source or located an issue in a public conversation in the world. I responded to the source through agreement and extension, and I set a limit on my claim through the use of meta-commentary so people wouldn't misunderstand my meaning. Graf and Birkenstein offer many critical moves for entering into academic conversations, such as citing the ideas of others and then responding, distinguishing voices or perspectives in argumentation, incorporating objections, indicating the broader significance of a topic, connecting argument components logically, and offering clarification when needed. These moves enable us to communicate effectively and make arguments in the world. So when you make your elevator pitch on behalf of an issue of critical relevance, you might draw on some of these strategies to do the job. At the same time, there are many ways that we could practice effective communication skills and or contexts in which we might make arguments. Drawing from Burke, some examples include interviews, speeches, debates, presentations, discussions, performances, and opportunities to engage in reciprocal teaching. So here is my idea for an activity. We might use a voice recording app to practice making elevator pitches, and we could share our recordings with peers for their response and or in exchange recordings. So if you had one minute to make a reasoned case for a critical issue in the world that people need to know about and or that they need to work toward resolving, what would that issue be? Use a voice recording app and make a case in the form of a one minute elevator pitch and feel free to send the recording to sgraber at ysu.edu. All pitches will receive comments.